I wanted to do a little short video here on my rock crusher that I built. Show you how it works and what it can do and show it to you in operation. Uh, so I'm going to take it apart and show you the insides here in a second. And show you how they work. Got an 8 horse uh, engine on it there. Uh, attached by pulleys slowing down the engine a little bit to the flails inside. The impact mill just spins a couple of uh, chains around and as the chains spin around and they hit the rocks they beat it to a pulp turning it into just powder powder powder. There's the exhaust there into a bucket. A little hole in the bucket there. Dust comes pouring out of there. I can attach a vacuum to that if I need to. Keep the dust down. I've set it up so just through the geometry of it and the spinning flails inside that uh, it actually sucks air in through the intake so the dust won't come back out through the intake and then it blows just because the geometry blows out the exhaust so any dust that does form inside is always blowing out the exhaust and coming out that little port in the bucket. I can attach a hose to that or even a vacuum so I can get the dust away from me while I'm operating it. Well, I'll take it apart here and show you what it looks like inside. So I've taken the four nuts off, the four nuts that hold the end plate on. Now this end plate just slides off. Let's see if we can get this one hand. There we go. Hard to do one hand. Uh, slides off and then you can see inside. You can see there's six chains in there. I also have a solid hammer that spins around in the middle. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that does any better or worse, but I thought I'd try it and it seems to work quite well. Uh, these chains are all loose and as this thing spins around they just flail through there and beat on the rocks that come through. You'll see these last two chains I've actually added a plate between them and that is actually to move the air a bit more as it's going because those two plates start the air spinning and as the air spins it pushes towards the exhaust taking the little particles of rock with it and any dust that um, is forming inside and blowing it through the exhaust port which is screened down to 1 16th well, if those are 1 8th uh, but the actual particles that come out are much, much smaller than that. That just prevents any rocks that might not have got beat up by the time it gets to that end from going out. The intake is at the far side, way over there, and the intake actually um, sucks the rocks and dust down in, beats it up. The big hammers just make sure that any big rocks uh, don't get through without being actually pulverized a little bit before they get to the final chains to just make them into dust and the material has to make its way, uh, I think it's 18 inches, from the far end, beating through those chains the whole way, down to this end before it can get to the exhaust and go away. The distance between the solid hammer and the wall is less than a sixteenth of an inch and that's one of the reasons they don't use solid hammers in one of these things is you don't want the rocks to jam between the hammer and the wall because that will just jam up the whole machine. My thought is that if a rock that's small enough to get in between that hammer there and the wall actually jams in there, it's going to be smaller than 1 16th of an inch and it's not going to be strong enough to stop the machine from spinning around. It's going to be weak and just crush up there. And so far it works quite well. I haven't had any jams and you can see inside there there's just residue of the last uh, run I did through here, that rusty orange stuff. You can sort of see the degree it powders it. That's what's coming out of this thing, that powder there. Just absolutely destroys the rocks. Okay, I'm going to put this back together and get some rocks small enough to crush. One thing about it, the intake is just a it's three inch square pipe, but it's neck down at the top to two and a half inches. So any rocks going in have to be smaller than two and a half to actually make it through the intake. Intake on the rock crusher here has got that little kink in it and that makes it so if any rocks that hit the initial chain sort of explode when they hit that chain and shoot back out the intake it'll come straight up for a second it'll hit the angle and bounce around a bit here and then fall back in. You don't get any rocks jumping out the top.
That's why that little kink in the intake there. So here are the uh, rocks that I want to crush down today. Uh, it's a combination of quartz and iron and a little bit of tellurides. Uh, they are too big right now to fit through the machine, so I'm going to break them up a bit, make them a bit smaller so they'll go through. Now, I could do that just by hitting them with a hammer or a chisel or something, but instead I got oh, the beast, old miniature jackhammer here. So I'm going to break those down, see if I can do it with one hand so I can videotape while I'm doing it. videotape with my hand. Breaking them up into smaller pieces there. I'm going to have to get rid of the video or the camera here so I can actually hold these things properly. That one went better. Glitter in it. It's just solid iron. Some of these pieces I've been able to find actual visible gold in. That is a stubborn one. I have to get the hammer out for that guy. There we go. Finally broke it. Let's have a look at the inside of that one. A couple layers of iron intertwined with a couple layers of quartz. That's good stuff. Big thick layers of tellurite in there too. Okay, I think these will mostly go through now. Oh, that's a bit too big. Down and get the rest of those down to the right size. To get the idea there. And then we can fire up the machine and crush away. So I figured what the problem was. They weren't breaking up very easily for me because I had them on the wood. I put them on wood just so the camera would pick up the, con the contrast between the wood and the rock easier rather than putting them just on the asphalt or the concrete. Um, but once I took it off the wood, put it on the concrete, they just busted up so much quicker. Let's see if we can do this one handed again. They just bust right up once they're down on something hard. Find right, a nice spot to do this one. Yeah, much easier. Just means I have to sweep up all my bits and pieces up. Enough that one could use one more little break. There we go, that'll do. That'll do. So they're all small enough to go in now. I can start pulverizing. Th oh, no, we got one more bucket full of stuff. One more bucket full to break up. And we can start pulverizing stuff. Well, I've made one hell of a mess. There's pieces everywhere now. Yeah, close up of these, see if you can have a bit of a look to see what they look like. This is mostly iron, but a fair amount of quartz in with this stuff. I've definitely found with this ore that the gold seems to be at the contact. Let's see if we'll focus on it. Ooh. Seems to be at the contact between the quartz 
and the iron. It's not focusing too well today. Yeah, there we are. Bust it all up. They should all fit through nicely now. Get the machine up and running and make some dust. I haven't got all done yet, but I want to show you what was inside the bucket and sort of how it's doing here. And see if we can get the lid off with one hand again. There we go. Oh yeah. Look at that. You can't see a thing. It's about a quarter full down there. Of dust. Nothing but dust. Iron dust. Look at me, I got the mask on because I don't want to breathe that stuff. And a few little pieces do go flying around, so eye protection is good. We can talk about Zach running the gold cube with all the crushed stuff that we crushed the other day. Well, there are some big nuggets of the stuff we did the other day. Well, let's hope we find some more today. The other big bin there um, is straight dug out of the pit, so it could there could be anything in that other big bin. This stuff has been run once before.